Sean Jalance here, and today I'm in Lubbock, Texas. My first time in Lubbock, Texas, just south of Amarillo, here at Marley Meats. Yes, Marley Meats, which is a food truck which is in the vicinity of Lubbock. So, but they travel around all over. We're talking like anywhere within 60 miles, you can definitely find these guys here. And today we're at Two Docks Brewing. Yes, Two Docks Brewing, they are regulars here, and uh, this place looks freaking awesome. So, for the challenge today, we're going to have 30 minutes to eat one of their massive, massive barbecue platters. So, this platter is on the menu, the retail is about $120. That being said, we can eat it in 30 minutes. We are gonna get it for free. So this platter itself has about six pounds of meat, about three pounds of sides, and then we are gonna have a banana pudding for a dessert. I get to pick the meats, which is awesome. I'll also get to pick the sides. So I'll let you know what I get. We'll head on in, have some fun, eat some food, and uh, let's go eat. Everyone, here we are with the food. It looks absolutely delicious. So definitely the, the bigger, go big or go home, we're really going big. They say things are bigger in Texas. I swear to God they are. So here we have the pork ribs. I have turkey, I have pulled pork. I have pork belly burnets. That's what they're really well known for and it looks absolutely delicious. I then have my favorite. You know I love it, I love it. We got lots of fatty brisket. I have some of their jalapeno cheddar sausage. I have a smoked bologna as well, which sounds really cool. We have their Raider taters, yes, which is kind of like a potato salad in the way. I have their coleslaw, their beans, a banana pudding for dessert, and their homemade sauce. I am so excited, this all looks so good. It smells delicious. Just meat, smoke, salt, pepper, and Texas. So, I'm super excited, so let's get started here just momentarily. All right, so this all looks absolutely delicious. Also a very pleasant day outside. So of course we have the flies also trying to get some of this dang good looking food. But uh, that's pretty much it. I don't really know where to start. Maybe we'll start with some of the turkey, which looks fantastic. So how about we get started with we'll safety on five, four, three, two, one, let's eat. Texas. <laughs> I did have gloves, I'm gonna put them on. Better late than never. I will be eating with my hands. I do have manners otherwise, everybody, but for the sake of this video, I won't have any manners. My apologies. All right. Mm. Very moist. Great spice to it. Hey everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are here at Marley Meats. Yes, Marley Meats in Lubbock, Texas. So, really cool food truck. Um, really amazing looking food truck, which is honestly offering some super, super amazing foods. Try one of these pork belly burnt ends. Mm. Nice and rich. Nice with that sauce on it too. Trust on this pulled pork. Delicious. Juicy salt pepper. That's sauce. Apple cider vinegar. A little bit of sweetness. So obviously we have this giant barbecue platter, but the biggest thing is that quality definitely came before quantity. Fantastic. Try a rib. Woo! Just fall off the bone. Dude, these are good ribs. Damn. Mm. That's a very good rib. All the flavors were absolutely delicious and they had some really kind of unique items. Like I never had a smoked bologna before. Um, I didn't really know what to expect, but I'll comment on that here in a moment. Whereas, you know, even the items like these ribs, the ribs were just exceptional. Um, the turkey was absolutely delicious. This was really, really good Texas style barbecue. And if you're not familiar with what Texas style barbecue really is, it's basically just like a heavy smoke. Uh, down in Texas, they'll use a lot of post oak, sometimes mesquite. Um, and then they uh, salt and pepper, a heavy, like a large grain salt, large grain pepper, just lots of it, lots of flavor. And Texas barbecue really focuses on the meats rather than sauces and cover ups. Hands down, the best ribs I've had in a super long time. Those are just so fire. Perfectly good, tender. Sausage. Yeah. 
Definitely got the jalapeno cheddar, a little bit of a kick. So in my opinion, Texas style barbecue can be some of the most complex and the most difficult to master because like I said, the focus is the meat. The only additions are salt and pepper. With the only additions being salt pepper, you really gotta smoke your meats right. You gotta have your meats tender, juicy, because otherwise, it's gonna show. You know, you can't just cover it in a sauce, um, you know, some heavy, like, you know, fake smoke or flavor. Like I said, Texas barbecue is my favorite, and it is, when it's good, it is perfection. And here at Marley Meats, this was just perfection. Um, and really, like I said, super impressive that this quality of food was coming out of a food truck. Smoke baloney. So for the challenge itself, you know, again, we had the six pounds of meat plus the sides. The sides were definitely large, again, all the way to pound, plus the banana pudding. Um, love the sauce. The sauce is really good. It was, you know, sweet, a little bit of acidity, still kind of had that true kind of Texas red just pizzazz to it. Um, and what else I'll say is the beans and coleslaw. I think those are like quintessential, like absolutely important sides that you need to have at a restaurant. And another thing you can really judge a restaurant by. So let's dive in. I'm gonna comment on the beans and coleslaw here in just a moment. I've never had smoked bologna before, but I will say it's, it's pretty good actually. Surprisingly good. I mean, you take a bologna and you're smoking it. Speaking of which though, what's your favorite side dish when you go to a barbecue place? I think like a lot of people like macaroni and cheese, I think potato salad, I think coleslaw, I think beans are some of the most popular, but my favorite? Hmm, you know, I think I'm gonna have to go with a coleslaw. I really like a good coleslaw, but let me know yours down below in a comment. Um, you know, what's your favorite side? I better try some brisket. Hallelujah. That is amazing. I am so excited God made cows. They taste great. Another thing, you know, again, Texas known for brisket, ribs, sausage, and let's start with the brisket. Oh my gosh, the brisket was fantastic, perfectly cooked, it was so delicious. I love a good fatty brisket. And I tell you, this was just my pure happy place. So like I said, if you're ever in the Lubbock area at all in the vicinity, definitely check out Marley Meats. I definitely recommend going on their social media, finding out where they are. Um, as again, they're kind of in and all around Lubbock. Um, and definitely don't miss the opportunity to come on by, get yourself some absolutely delicious barbecue. I don't, I like you won't, you will not, uh, you will not regret it. Um, definitely try that fatty brisket. I think that is uh, a keeper and those ribs as well. Very delicious. But with that, I'll let you get to the rest of the video. If you like the video so far, please hit that like button and do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down below. It helps the channel grow, helps other people find these videos that you enjoy so much. And with that, I'll let you get to the rest of the video. We're probably about like six and a half minutes in, something like that. I love it. It's too good. fantastic I'm just thoroughly enjoying everything like the brisket is just you got that yeah, too good the ribs are too good these are really good so we'll finish these up we're almost done the meats and we're on to the sides 
not to be underestimated, these are three pounds of size. One, two, three, plus the banana pudding. Although that I'm really excited for. I might actually put it down here so I don't get any, uh, any more sauce in it. Got a little bit of meat already. I also have some of their pickles here. Ooh! Nice and zesty. Every time, oh my gosh. Takes my breath away. I think I might undo the belt at this point. Give me a couple extra horsepower. Woo! A little more room. It, it always works. Yeah, stretchy pants or just pop that belt, you know? Yeah, I'm, 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 I tell you, I'm not. Excellent. Mm. Oh yeah, we got brisket in that, in that, uh, with those beans too. Fire. Beans, very good. I love anything with beef, but that is brisket. So like, how do you go on? Coleslaw. Luckily, also has a little bit of, a, I think it's a little bit of brisket as well. That's my doing, but just gotta mix it up. The coleslaw as well, that's fantastic. It's got sweet, it's creamy. It shows a little like a smoked paprika or something in it as well. Really giving it a beautiful taste. Great flavor. Now the Raider Taters, which is kind of similar to a potato salad. A little like sour cream in there. Make it nice and tangy. Very delicious.
last but not least, dessert, banana pudding. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, you guys can talk and stuff too. Don't they have to be quiet, like you know, do whatever you want. All right. I'm excited. Now this is also a homemade family secret recipe. Get the uh, Raider tater that's out of my mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> Woo -wee. That is like mm. that is good. That is sweet. That is airy. Now I made a mess. <laughs> That's all right, I'll clean up. <laughs> no shame. That's why I wear black. Why I wear black, food gets all over. This is so good, I think it's only suiting. And that we're done. That was, that was delicious. That was so good. You got more of that banana pudding, right? Yeah. I think we're in for a treat. That everyone, I have to give a huge thanks to Marley Meats here. The food is fantastic. Um, we're at one of their uh, very frequent locations here at Two Docks Brewery. But man, this was absolutely fantastic. Those are by far the best ribs I've had in an extremely, extremely long time. That brisket is just like pure Texas, pure melt in your mouth, perfectly rendered, salt, pepper, absolutely delicious. Excuse me. Got a few burps. Burps are always compliments to the chef. I stand by that, I swill to this day. The turkey was fantastic, guys. Everything was so good. This is just Texas, like, I can't say enough. So if you're definitely in the Lubbock area, stop on by, check this place out. Follow their social, you'll get kind of their locations all around. They're going like 60 miles all in the vicinity. They have multiple trucks. I've heard they're actually even franchised. If you want to start franchising, I tell you, they got this down. This is perfect. This is good barbecue. I am so excited. This is absolutely fantastic. And uh, that's about it. Just want to give a huge thanks to them guys. Uh, this is amazing. It really, really was. I love barbecue. I love Texas barbecue. I love Texas. This is amazing. So thank you everybody. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys coming out. Thank you God. Thank you Jesus. Thank you barbecue. And until next time everybody. With a 14 minute and 57 seconds total time. It was beautiful. So that everybody, until next time. So have a hungry, happy eating and have a lovely day. Hey everyone, Joel Lance here, and today I'm in Lubbock, Texas. My first time in Lubbock, Texas, just south of Amarillo, here, <coughs> here at Marley Meats. Yes, Marley Meats, which is a food truck which is in the vicinity of Lubbock. So, but they travel around all over. We're talking like anywhere within 60 miles, you can definitely find these guys here. And today we're at Two Docks Brewing. Yes, Two Docks Brewing, they are regulars here, and uh, this place looks freaking awesome. Try to move away from the music a little bit. So for the challenge today, we're going to have 30 minutes to eat one of their massive, massive barbecue platters. So, uh, so this platter can tip. Try to move away from the music, but now we have a train going. But anyway, today we're gonna to be eating one of their massive barbecue platters. Hi everyone, here we are at the Palo Duro Canyon, which is definitely a sight to be seen in Amarillo, just outside Amarillo, just south. Look at this thing, look how big. Look how big this canyon is. I'm assuming you can see it. I can barely see the screen. Very bright out today. Okay, let me try to give you, guys, give you guys some views, some sights. Yeah, just literally a massive, massive, massive canyon. A little bit of drop here. But this thing just goes on for miles and miles. From my understanding, this is definitely one of the biggest kind of like active canyons in uh, at least America. Um, you can see it just goes down all the, all the, all the way very 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 deep you can do like uh, jeep trips through here you can do horse rides like horsebacks yeah very very impressive so Paula Dura. so we are inside the gift shop I mentioned like little thingy things they have a telescope here it's free I'll maybe use it but yeah just a further view of the canyon 
And now, I don't know any of the history about here, but let's read about it. So how it happened. Finally, the canyon reached its present depth 10,000 years ago today. A much reduced stream flowed quietly through the canyon. So it looks like it went through the layers, the water just moving through. Um, throughout history, the canyon has been lengthened consistently um, and headward, down cutting and wide and undercutting, weathering and mass wasting. So basically just water running through the, the ground made to these big deep rivets. And later the renewed uplift of the Rocky Mountains produced steeper stream gradients in the plains, increased rainfall during this period of glaciation glaciers uh, to the north created greater runoff and the greatest amount of down cutting probably occurred 10,000 years ago so again just further cutting and yeah less than 1 million years ago the prairie dog fork road of the red river began eroding away so I think it kind of went like so that was one it's kind of weird it's backwards but that's one two three so I should have read them from up or bottom to, to up but yeah there you go that's how it happened so there's been a number of uh, canyons, uh, or sorry, um, uh, fossils. Fossils found in the canyons, um, including like this like Tilophosaurus head, legs, whatever this guy is, our bigger and reptile. Did this meadow porous, which is kind of like a big alligator looking thing. Um, fish as well. So kind of crazy just to show that, uh, you know, obviously there was water here at some point and they dig for fossils. Interesting enough, there was a Polidero skull of art, um, which is pretty interesting. I'm not going to read too much into that, but it's pretty cool. Apparently there's about uh, 200 million uh, years of missing whatever in between the layers of the rock, which is kind of weird. I don't know uh, how to describe that, but basically in between the dinosaurs and mammals, we kind of got, uh, got lost some things. Here's a guest book. Maybe I'll have to sign it just to say I was here. Maybe I'll look back on this one day if I'm ever back in the area. And uh, address, we'll just put Canada. YouTube me. There you go. <laughs> oh, here we have some more fossils, like rhino and triter triceratop-looking things. That's pretty... That's pretty crazy. Um, more fossils, of like bull and bison things. Some jaws. Obviously, some birds. And we got lots of lots of stuff here. From a human perspective, there's talking about like the early hunters. So we had, you know, using um, you know arrows, spears, um, different pieces of equipment they would have used. I'm talking about isolating a small woolly mammoth. So definitely lots of uh, things. Oh, look at this. That's cool. They're showing like, I guess the migration through all the way from like Canada, the north to the south. It's pretty cool. We then have uh, more kind of pieces of history. I'll we'll put it that way. Bisons and equipment that they would have used, an old skull. Uh, the plant resources of the archaic Indian foragers were abundant and varied. They gathered fruits, nuts, seeds of all kinds. Um, and these like a stone and mortar thing. Another big skull. Here's getting obviously more into a modern day. This is still um, the Panhandle Pueblo culture. I don't know if I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing that, but anyway, we got um, bone sharpeners, flint drills, um, different blades. And this it looks like at this point they were trying to suggest that they were uh, farming. And then uh, more um, history about the historic tribes, which uh, dominated and owned, uh, still probably own this land today. Um, which is really cool. Um, the last stand descending from the canyon rim at dawn on September 28th of 1872, McKenzie's troops burned villages and slaughtered over 10 or a thousand horses limiting the chance of survival outside the reservation without food and shelter or transportation. The families of all the indigenous walked over 200 miles back to Oklahoma. Wow, that's that's unfortunate. Crazy. I guess that is the Battle of the Palo Duro Canyon. 
which kind of led it to be what it what it was today. Crazy, crazy history, and crazy to think like how this could have happened either like at the same time so long ago and yet not so long ago. All right, we're not gonna do all the hikes here by any means. I think that would take you probably like 12 years. But this is the first little um, hikey stretch. This is called the Triassic Trail. Um, it is definitely one of the shortest ones. It's only about a quarter of a mile. Uh, basically, from my understanding, quarter of the map, just you walk on down, you walk on back. But I imagine it gives you just some sort of a lookout um, up over there, up over yonder, so they say. So we'll uh, let us see what the Triassic Trail exposes. This is kind of the first little site overseeing of the Triassic Trail that we're getting. I think there's probably one more, little more one down there, but pretty cool. Not bad. Here we got some wildlife. We got a lizard, a bright green one actually. Very, very pretty. He's here sunning himself, obviously. I'm okay to see lizards and I'd like to see some other wildlife. There we saw some wild boar tracks back there as well. The only thing uh, we're going to hope and try not to see is probably some rattlesnakes, but that being said, if we do, we just keep our distance. That is a in memory of... Wow. This is, uh, this is another, another great, great, great crazy view. And like, just it's amazing how peaceful it is out here. We just listen. Just so still, so quiet, with the exception of those few bugs. And here we are at another lookout of the canyon. We're gonna get uh, continue to drive from this point. You can actually drive pretty much all through the canyon, which is pretty impressive. But uh, yeah, we're gonna get driving. But again, just to like show how big this thing is. And like I said, you could literally spend hours and hours and hours and days up here. Crazy. So we're down in the valley. There's a part of the camping area. We got a trading post up here, it's called. Which is, says sandwiches, souvenirs, ice, groceries, wood, gasoline. Okay, okay. So pretty much anything you need, I guess, out here in the desert. We have, I don't know, lots of, uh, lots of miles actually, surprisingly. A surprising amount of, uh, oh, we got stables too for your horses. We got everything. Like I said, this place is vast. It offers a lot, it's pretty impressive. Well, uh, I know you can only see bits and pieces of the canyon right now, but I think when we kind of get down in it, I think it's gonna open up a little bit more. So we'll see a little bit uh, on the other side of these trees. And now here it's starting to open up a bit more. What's really cool is if you look, you can see like the different layers. A lot like the different colors of the rock. You now as you have like more red, and then it gets lighter, more like brown, and then more like gray. And just what else is crazy is how red some of the rock and dirt is here on Amarillo. Uh, it must be built kind of on like sandstone. I'm assuming that's why it's red. Um, when the only other like, actual place I've really seen with what I would call red rock or red dirt now beside Amarillo is on Prince Edward Island. So uh, Prince Edward Island in Canada, its dirt is all red. It's known for its red mud because it is made of complete sandstone. So as we'll see right up here, kind of this rock cliff, and all right here, it's all red, and like bright red, and then the mud's red. So pretty cool. And at this point, we are so, so, so deep into Palador. We've literally been driving for like 20 minutes, like at a, like, you know, 40 miles an hour, pretty much. This is crazy. There's such an extensive roadway through this place, not to mention the just a mass size of it. But like, we are just literally right now just surrounded, surrounded, surrounded by the canyon. And one thing we did stop, kind of the last stop before we got to turn around, got to go head down to Lubbock, is uh, right here this really cool like cliff cave kind of thing so we're definitely gonna check this out real quick uh, before we gotta head down south a little bit further but yeah Palo Dura would definitely recommend this canyon is absolutely massive if I'm not mistaken it is maybe the second biggest in America under only that under the Grand Canyon um, but yeah this is really impressive and like I said absolutely giant I had no clue be such a uh, road system here let alone um, how well I knew it was gonna be really big but like this is really really big really impressive and like I said just like the amount of different um, kind of scapes and looks 
You can also camp here, which is super cool. But anyway, let's check this on out and uh, let's see what it, let's see it, see it. All right, and we have walked up. We officially made it through the cave. It was uh, a little bit of a trick. Hey, Kayla, made it. A little bit down there, you can kind of see. Kind of came through this windy thing. That's our car way over there. Um, but yeah, it does look really cool. And then all the canyon and stuff. But here's the actual cave. I'm trying to adjust the settings here a little bit, but it's funny, it's actually uh, kind of wet in here. It's like clay. Um, but yeah, definitely a big, massive cave. Kind of see through it. It's pretty cool. Um, impressive. It might cave in, you think? Uh oh, that's not good. That's right, I better be careful. Yeah, no, definitely better safe than sorry. So yeah, definitely cool and nice. Uh, I will say though, notice the temperature difference? Literally like, yeah, like just coming out of the sunshine to in here, cause like the day is, I don't even know if it's, it might be 80, might be 80 degrees, but this is just like, in the sun it is much closer to 90. And then here, yeah, and then here is just, uh, here's just beautiful. So anyway, here we go, we made it to the cave. And coming out of the cave, as we're saying, definitely a uh, very big, cool cave thingy thing. That's right, Kayla's there. <laughs> Look at my head out of the way. No, it's all good. But yeah, pretty cool. And then obviously people kind of written in the walls. Um, but yeah, very interesting, kind of a cool structure. These mounds just look really cool. I don't know, they look like, I don't know, like ant hills almost, or just like they're made to be built like that, which is really cool. And then kind of do the path down and all the way over into the canyons and the car. So very cool.